find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Want to have you. your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. But I ain't starving yet. Chain for the pain, cocktail for the set. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Beat up for the taste of the blood. Six, six, six. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show. It's Sorgatron. Mike Sorg here in the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. A, a humble video uh, producer up here helping with some indie wrestling with me, as usual. The announcer for uh, Inspire Pro Wrestling in Texas is Eamon, fresh off a show that I, I understand included beach attire, but we'll get into that a little later. We'll definitely dive into that in a little bit. See the pun I made, dive, beach, you, you get it. <laughs> and we'll, we'll check our guests in a moment, but in the meantime, of course, you have found the Indie Mayhem Show. This is episode 24. Uh, please check out all the episodes over on WrestlingMayhemShow.com and all the other stuff we do, the Mayhem Show uh, proper, of course, and the, the, all the wrap-ups we do for, for Raw, TNA, stuff like that, the Thursday Night Wars, and other uh, material uh, if you're into wrestling. And, of course, check us out on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, Spreaker, iHeartRadio if you're on that, uh, in video and audio forms, like us. Uh, follow us, share it with your friends, comment on it, let us know uh, what you think about what's going on uh, with this show and others, and, and just, just help us uh, get the word out. And, of course, you can drop a line to goodtimes at WrestlingMayhemShow.com with your thoughts on indie wrestling, things we should talk about, or what indie wrestler you think Eamon looks like. And we'll get into that into a little <laughs> bit as well. 412-206-WMS0. <laughs> is the uh, hotline if you want to leave a voicemail, of course. And, of course, a big thanks to Basic Sickness for the intro theme song at basicsickness.com. We're at Mayhem Show on Twitter, Facebook, Google+, Plus on Wrestling Mayhem Show. And I think that's everything. We're here live. <laughs> no, no, we're here live Tuesdays, uh, 11 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 p.m. Central, at live.sorgatronmedia.com if you want to check out what we're doing live. Uh, and uh, drop into the chat room if you have any questions for our guests as well. So, Eamon, take it away. We got somebody from your neck of the woods, I believe. Yes, we do. Speaking of our guests this week, I have a very special guest on this week's Indie Mayhem show. Uh, our, I believe, fourth or fifth, I can't, I don't remember the exact numbers, our fourth or fifth female wrestler that we've had on the show. So very exciting stuff. Uh, she's a local wrestler that has done stuff all throughout the state of Texas. Uh, and it's a pleasure to have her on. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Indie Mayhem show, Brienne. Brienne, how are you? I am great, Eamon. How are you? I'm doing very well. Um, so, so let's kick it off with uh, the question that we usually start with with all our, of our uh, people that we have on our show, and that is, uh, what is your first ever memory of uh, professional wrestling? Oh, my very first memory of professional wrestling would have to be growing up up here in Texoma, um, coming over to visit my grandparents, like on weekends or holidays or you know family get-togethers and crawling up in my grandfather's lap and sitting and watching wrestling on TV with him. Awesome. And was there any, uh, was there any names of uh, wrestlers that sort of stuck out to you uh, in, in that, around that time? Um, I was pretty young, so I don't remember a whole lot of them. I do remember um, the Hart Foundation. They always stuck out mm. to me. I yeah, think it was I'm... just because it was boys wearing pink, but that, that, <laughs> uh, anyway. <laughs> definitely that, that's definitely one thing to seek out uh and so obviously the transition from watching wrestling to becoming a wrestler was when did you start sort of getting an interest of wanting to become a professional wrestler um i would say about i guess in my mid-teen years i guess i was about 15 um i started really getting into watching wrestling uh, regularly before then I had just watched it, you know, with, like I said, with my grandparents, but, uh, I really got into watching it and I started playing sports at that time. So I was paying more attention to the athleticism behind what was going on instead of just watching the match. I, I was actually, I guess that was the first time I actually started what you could call studying a match. Definitely. So sort of like maybe looking for a, getting a different appreciation out of it possibly. Right. 
Uh, so to my knowledge, I believe you, uh, you started training at the uh, Tugboat Taylor Wrestling Academy. Um, uh, where did you find uh, uh, Tugboat Taylor's school and, and, and uh, how did you get involved with it? I met Tug and his son Chaz up here in Texoma. They were doing, they were participating in um, Johnny Mantel's uh, okay, you're going to have to forgive me because this is German and I don't speak German very well, but I'm going <laughs> to attempt this, okay? <laughs> no problem. It's the German Fest Ringenmeisterschaft Tournament. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, Johnny Mantel was putting it on. He was <clears throat> kind of in the area. Um, there's a little town called Munster that's not too far from where I live. Um, and, and it's a very German settlement. They, they're very proud of their German heritage. And every year they have German Fest. Well, in, I think it was 2011, I'll say, in the spring, he put on the, the GWT tournament. And uh, that's where I met Chaz and Tug for the first time. And I had, uh, you know, I was just enjoying the show. It was a, a three-day tournament. I was there for two of the days. Um, enjoy watching the matches. I met some of the wrestlers there, talk, started talking to Chaz, you know, brought up the, you know, it's always been my dream to be a wrestler. And that's when he and Tug brought to my attention that they were running their school down in Houston. Um, Chaz was also working for uh, Picks on the Pride Wrestling here in Sherman at the time. Uh, we've since become affiliated, affiliated with NWA, and we are now NWA Texoma. Um, but it was Texas on Pride at the time and, uh, started going to the shows. I didn't know they were here in town. Um, thanks to GWT. That's another thing that was brought to my attention was that we did have wrestling here in town. Um, so over the next few months, I, I talked to Chaz and talked to Tug and talked to some of the guys down there and some of their graduates and some of their current students. And, um, in August of 2011, I went down for my first day of training. I showed up in jeans and a t-shirt with makeup on, hair done, just expecting to watch practice. Mm -hmm. So Chaz was a little late getting there that day. He pulls up, he sees me, he goes, what are you doing? I said, I'm here to check out training. He goes, you can't just watch. He says, you have to get in the ring to know if this is what you want to do or not. (laughs) <laughs> so I'm standing there with this shocked look on my face because I wasn't expecting to have to actually get in the ring on my first day. <laughs> uh, but luckily I had brought some extra clothes with me. So I changed real quick, got in the ring, and the first time I stepped in between the ropes, I I knew that that was what I wanted to do. Awesome. Really cool. So so going in and officially training uh, with Tugboat, uh, and and Chaz as well. Uh, how was it like? How was I guess a a, a week in you know, week in uh, training uh, like for uh, for that school? Um, they usually train on Tuesdays and Thursday evenings. They usually start about four o'clock in the afternoon, four or four thirty. You know, as soon as everybody can get there off uh, from work and whatnot. And we were usually there till eight thirty, nine, ten o'clock at night. Sometimes, you know, just going as long as we could and doing as much as we could. Um, it's very humid <laughs> down in Houston <laughs> being on the coast. Um, here in Sherman, we have a small body of water. <laughs> so I was not used to humidity. So for, for me, I, I, the humidity about killed me um, because the their training facility is not some nice air-conditioned state-of-the-art facility. It mm. it was an old uh, empty warehouse that they opened the big garage doors on either side, and that was our air conditioning, was the breeze coming through. So mm. it was really very basic and very old school, and the focus was on what we were doing in the ring and making us better instead of, oh, let's have some AC and let's have this nice cushy ring and let's have, have all this expensive equipment. It was very, very, to me, it it was very much the heart of training. Awesome. And, and I believe you had your first match around uh, 2012, I believe. Uh, And so what was it like to, you know, get to the point going through training and then actually 
getting in the ring for for the very first time for a show? Um, well, as part of training, we would have practice matches there at the gym. Hmm. You know, a student versus a teacher, or a, you know, student versus student, whatever we had there that day. But at the factory, there's there's no crowd, there's no audience to feed off of, right. and getting into the ring in front of hundreds of people for the very first time. My very first match was May 25th, 2012 at Comic Palooza. So you've got thousands, not only thousands of people in the building, but a good portion of those are wrestling fans. Mm -hmm. And so they made a point to come to the shows to watch the wrestling that was going on. So you've got, I mean, there was at least 500 people there for my first match. Wow. So that kind of got my heart going. And then, you know, just the fact that it was my first match, I, you know, had me even more excited and amped up. And then you throw in the fact that it's against Barbie Hayden, who's one of the best female talents in Texas, if not in the country. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was, I was nervous. I was excited. I mean, pretty much any emotion that you can feel, I was feeling that day <laughs> all at the same time. <laughs> well, that's always, that's always good to, to get that rush of emotion. Um, I remember the first time I actually got to see you wrestle was for a uh, NWA Houston event, uh, I believe around 2012, so around your first year. Uh, and the one thing I noticed, and, and actually I get into the discussion with Sorga Bunch, is the um, – I, I mentioned, you know, Texas wrestling. I think a lot of people sort of have an idea of what Texas wrestling is based on sort of like the older days. Uh, and obviously a, a lot of it's very different, but I think you sort of em embrace that um, that sort of old school style, uh, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, do you, Would you agree with that? And do you think, um, you know, did that come through, you know, the people you were around or influence or, or do you enjoy sort of that more um, traditional style? I, I would definitely consider myself old school. Um, mm. Part of it comes from <clears throat> Chaz and Tug and the way that they taught me because Tug and Chaz are very old school as far as, you know, what we do in the ring and, you know, the business in general. They're very old school. Um, <clears throat> I've also discovered that most of the people that I associate with regularly, I mean, I'm not talking about just, you know, we're in the same locker room at a show. Like, people that I spend my time with outside of wrestling that are in the business, they have the same mindset as me. They're, they're that, they have that old school mentality also. Um, and I just, I'm, personally, I've always been a fan of the old school style. I'd rather sit and watch an old, you know, Fabulous Moolah match, Fab you know, a Leilani Kai match, as opposed to any of the Divas matches that they have on TV today. Right. I mean, it's, it's just, it's always, that style is always spoken to me. Definitely. Awesome. Uh, and you mentioned sort of the people you had surrounded yourself with. Uh, I would say besides the people who had trained you, who, who would you name as sort of your big uh, uh, influences in professional wrestling? Um... Aside from all the guys associated with the factory, because all of them have treated me like family and have really taken an interest in what I do and, and you know, me becoming a better wrestler, um, I'd say right at the moment, the one person that's having the most influence on me is um, Apocalypse, APOC, um, out mm -hmm. of Dallas. Awesome, cool. Uh, yeah, I've actually heard his name thrown around. He seems to be one that sort of, uh, like you said before, like sort of embraces that same sort of style and is a, a, a reputable name. Yes, definitely. Like he's um, he's based out of Dallas, and he is one of the guys that worked for the old PCW promotion that was in Arlington. That was actually one of the promotions that I watched when I was, you know, a, a teenager. You know, really getting a into wrestling so for me being able to share a locker room with him and he's become my mentor now since I've moved home from Houston um, you know it's it's like the only thing I can think to equate it to is like if you know there's a kid studying to play the violin 
and then all of a sudden they meet, get to meet, say, Yo-Yo Ma, and <laughs> he becomes their mentor. You know, it's, it's like that for me. Awesome. Definitely someone that do you, you know, look up to and idolize. Um, yeah. So uh, a common question that we ask and sort of one of the recurring questions we have on the show is sort of to spark a bit of conversation with all of our guests. Uh, and, and this could cover a wide variety of things. Uh, it's nothing uh, too specific, but uh, I like to ask, what is the best thing uh, for you about independent wrestling and what in turn is the worst thing about independent wrestling? Um, I think the best thing in general about independent wrestling is that brotherhood, that camaraderie that we have with each other. Um, and on the inverse, there are those, you know, the worst thing is, you know, the, the, what you would call quote unquote, the bad seeds, the ones who think that, you know, they're the end all and be all, you know, mm. there's, there's too many of those. They're, they think that, you know, they can do this and, and they're the answer and they're basically trying to tear down, tear apart everything that everyone else is trying to bring together and build together. Definitely. Yeah. And going back, like mentioning like that, that, that camaraderie you mentioned, like it's, it's a, it's a strong thing, you know, uh, especially it in is. professional wrestling. It, it's a very strong thing. I, I didn't realize how strong of a bond it was until I went through some uh, medical problems not too long ago. And just about every day, you know, I had people texting me and calling me and, and, you know, just wanting to know how things were going and, and that really spoke to me that they went out of their way to take time out of, you know, their lives and, and from their family or whatever's going on in their lives just to check on me and to find out how I was doing. Definitely. Awesome. Uh, so I, I do want to sort of also touch on, uh, in your wrestling career since, uh, you know, being a few years in, do you have any big, uh, uh, future goals, maybe uh, wrestlers uh, that you haven't faced yet that you would like to face, um, uh, companies or, or, or places you'd like to go in wrestling. Uh, uh, is there any sort of future goals uh, that you that you set for yourself? I would love, of course, to make it onto, you know, national TV one day. I would love to be, you know, a household name. Um, <clears throat> but in the meantime, right now, my goals are just to work wrestle in at least two new states every year. And as far as dream opponents go, I do have a few. Um <clears throat> definitely one of the ones I would love to get in the ring with would be Jazz. Um mm. she's, she's one of those that, you know, I watch on T V a lot and I really like her style and just admire her. Um and, I mean, there's just so much talent in the indies that I just I can't sit here and name who everyone that I want to have a match with because we'd be here for hours. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> but no, I, I know, and I know Jazz makes a, a couple runs to uh, Texas every now and then, sort of based out of the south. So yeah, you know, definitely one day down the line that could very well happen. Yeah, hopefully, I'm hoping for it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I. First of all, thank you for for coming on. Uh, if you have, a, do you have any upcoming shows that anyone can check you out on, or or, or places where they can find uh, more information about you? Uh, uh, let everyone know. Yeah, um, this month I've got two shows left. Uh, this coming Friday, I will be at NWA Texoma. Uh, it runs in Sherman, Texas, at the uh, Elks Lodge. Um, and then next Saturday. The 28th, I have a show in Eustis, Texas, which is outside of Dallas, um, for the North Texas Wrestling Alliance um, at the Eustis Fire Department. And I wish I could remember the addresses for those off of the top of my head, <laughs> but I, there's so much information in there for the, all the different companies that I can't pull it out right now. <laughs> uh, Absolutely. Well, be, yeah, be sure to are... check out uh, uh, NWA Texoma or uh, North Texas Wrestling Alliance because uh, – Hey, all, anywhere you can find them on the internet because so definitely go out and support those shows. Yeah, um, I'm on Facebook. Um, I have a Twitter that I haven't gotten a whole lot of use out of. I remember to do it every now and then. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm on Facebook. Um, I believe the address is 
Bree, B-R-E-E dot A-N-N dot, and then the number five. Awesome. So definitely go check uh, check out Brianne uh, if, if you are a Texas resident or, or in any state for that matter and she's on your show. Be sure to uh, go check her out. Thank you very much for joining us again. Uh, and Sorg, I believe we are going to talk about some indie wrestling. That's right, Eamon. And uh, we have, of course, uh, some friends uh, usually when we have these weekends like we have where it seems like every one of us has a show to attend work etc you of course have your inspired show we'll get to in a few moments uh sogatron media had of course rwa and iwc a uh, big weekend for both going on there so let's uh, uh right off uh this is uh we'll, we'll start with iwc and joining me here somebody will help us out uh over at the dvd table and and got to watch the show from a fan's perspective over there is uh zach rizza at the e riz on the twitters if you want to check him out uh but he got to join us and, and check it out and he's a guy i kept asking did that thing look good did it look good when they did that thing you know uh <laughs> and that, that thing sword yes great yes <laughs> well of course the the super indie show first of all what are the biggest takeaways uh from this show uh as far as you think riz and I'll, I'll give mine here in a moment well first of all we saw the future of professional wrestling and i don't from top to bottom left and right there was not one soft spot in that whole in that whole card uh rj city is going to be huge uh, I don't. I don't know, Sorg. If you're a big fan, like I am of him, mm-hmm. uh, but he's entertaining. He's good on the mic. He's 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 a great wrestler, and he deserves to be Super Indie Champion. Uh, the first one to go into uh, Super Indie as champion, customarily. Um, um, the, the the basically the belt is defended in a tournament once a year, mm-hmm. yeah, um, and, and and regular the rest uh, of the year, uh, and yeah. he's the first one to go the entire distance. And I believe it started with Jerry Lynn when he uh, decided to put himself in the match mm-hmm. because usually it was a year thing where you had to have you know a certain uh, aspect to it. You have to have that one year and then the champion gives the belt to the new champion. Uh, but like I said, he, RJ city is amazing. Uh, Sammy, uh, wherever Amon help me out on this. Last it, I was going to wait Guevara. for you to say it. Uh, yeah. Sammy Guevara, Guevara, Guevara. Sammy Guevara, AKA Amon stretch Armstrong. <laughs> I thought it was like um, it was stretched out Eamon with abs. Stretched out Eamon with abs and better talent. And better talent. Thank you, Miss. In the ring. Um, I guess. <laughs> but it's a wonderful crap. compliment, I think. By the way, best part about the whole uh, description of him, Sammy Guevara is actually younger than I am. Wow. Yeah, he's like, what did it say, 21, right? <clears throat> he, he's, I think, yeah, I think he's uh, just 20. Um, like, and. Jeez. He uh, he's already done multiple tours of Mexico. Uh, he just came off of a tour of Germany. Um, that kid is something special. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And it was in one of the pre-shows. I'm not sure where, uh, but they mentioned the fact that, or was it on this show, uh, that you know, Plummer said that at least one superstar out of everybody in a super indie has gone on to WWE fan fans stardom or TNA stardom or just went bananas. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And in this mat, in in this tournament, I can easily say that most of those guys in that tournament will probably be on WWE TV or TNA TV. It was a very, I, I will say from the way it just looked, um, very impressive lineup this year. Yeah. Uh, I, I think they've they've delved um, uh, in getting a lot of different guys, a lot of people all across independent wrestling, um, different styles, different, um, I guess, resumes, you could say. Um, I, I, it was a really interesting lineup this year. And, and, and the stuff that I've seen on the show so far, 
um, it looks amazing. So I would mm -hmm. definitely check it out. Yeah, and I think the best part about it, and I'm not going to spoil anything, but the entire time during the uh, Sammy G and uh, uh, what's his name, the first the first round match, the TNA guy. <laughs> Yeah, a TNA guy with the, you know, the flippy, yeah. flippy powerbomb thing. Um, a lot of people wanted to see the Canadian Destroyer. A lot of people were very upset. He's going to throw that out there. But still, it was amazing to watch that those two go together and mm. work flawlessly. And... And it's cool that those two guys, the Chris Saban and the Petey Williams, had great matches that both uh, went on amazingly and just, you know, showed off the young talent mm -hmm. that IWC had well, and yeah. that the Indies have, like the Sammies and the, the facades. <clears throat> and it's just goes to show you that it's awesome to be an indie wrestling fan right now. Mm -hmm. and, and both guys, I mean, you look at that, and, and it's it's both, you know, Petey and Saban. Saban won 10 years ago at Super Indy 3, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and to be able to come back, it's, it's awesome. And I think that's the great thing about indie wrestling is having those guys like Saban and Williams in uh, to interact with, like, the Sammy Guevara's and the facades and, and, and you know, those type of guys. I think I think that's... The thing that's cool about indie wrestling is, is, you know, the opportunity that provides to so many people to create the next big stars. Mm -hmm. And that that's what, like I said, super indie. I get giddy every time this year come this time of year comes around <laughs> because of the names that come up, and I know I'm getting the best of the best. And this year was one of the best of the best. Very cool. um, so yeah, if you want to go on, go, go to sorgtronmedia.com. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna pitch the uh, the digital downloads here. Sorg, <laughs> uh, go go to go to sorgtronmedia.com. Get your digital di downloads. I'll, I'll complete. Indie. I'll you know, pass it to me. I'll complete the the the, the play here. Hot tag. Hot, hot tag, tag. Hot tag. tag. Uh, no, actually, <laughs> and it it is uh, edited. It is uh, uh, probably done rendering by now upstairs. Uh, so the digital the download, the beast. digital download should be sli slipping out here uh, Wednesday, probably by the time you're hearing this on on, on podcast or, or or YouTube or something like that. Uh, so you can go check it out right away. DVD shortly to follow. Um, so I, I, I love I love especially I, I never looked at it this way because it was such a new concept. But now looking at the schedule and, and we go from IWC, which is the people are coming up, the people are making it, you know, uh, to proving grounds is next. So it's like you hit the reset button, mm -hmm. you know, and you never know what new talent you're going to see at this show. Um, and it's very low level. We do it at one of the venues. It's, it's, it's you know, it's going to be, you know, no production versus what you're seeing uh, here, you know. Uh, but hey, uh, you know, but, Sammy, last year, Sammy Guevara was in Proving Grounds and right. now he made a, you know, he was in the finals of Super Indy. Like. Exactly. Exactly. And after, after mm -hmm. having a great match in between at another White Oak show. Uh, that's that's mm -hmm. tremendous. Coming all the way up here from Texas, low rider as well, all the way from Texas. Uh, uh, guys from low Canada. Rider. Hmm. I, I believe low rider has been every super indie I've seen so far. <laughs> I, I I think he's been in every super indie. He's, a, he's and awesome. And he just keeps on. He's awesome. Yes. He keeps on improving himself and shocking me, uh, especially with his stories mm. that. <laughs> That we will not get into on this show for obvious reasons. <laughs> I, I've had the first. I have the privilege of working with Lowrider. I, 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 have, I have some of those stories as well. But yes, fun, He's fun a crazy stuff. Dude. Always. He's a fun dude. I love me some Lowrider. I, mean, uh, I, you... I was just watching him bounce around there before the show, and he is a he is a, he is a character. Oh, definitely, absolutely. Awesome. So go check it out. And there's another one this uh, this weekend as well. RWA No Retreat Six. Um, I know uh, Chachi was there. Uh, doing production for us uh, 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 as far as that goes. So I'll, I'll get to see it here later this week as I edit it, edit it together. Um, so, uh, uh, Wheels, what uh, what do I have to expect from this one? Wow, Sorg. One, it was only six. So, Oh, geez. Unless, 
Where's No Retreat? Yeah. Oh, No Retreat was the last one. I'm sorry. Yes, yes. But hey, that's all right. Um, just like the show title is called Unleashed. Wow. I was expecting different things going into this show, but I was not expecting everything that I saw Saturday. We saw, if many people have seen on the website, there was a career versus career matchup. Ashton Amherst versus Ryan Rain. And that match delivered. I mean, it didn't stay in the ring. And the referee gave it a lot of liberties. I mean, we've seen little kids' foot used. We've seen chairs. We saw, I think I saw grandma's cane used. I don't know. <laughs> but it, it does. And I know it uses just as a moniker, but Ashton and Hurst is definitely the best guy in Pittsburgh, but I mean, to catch what the results were, go to rwalive.com or buy the DVD or digital download. But those two delivered what they could. And I said this on the Wrestling Mayhem show, but June seems to be the month of last man standing matches. And Ryan Mitchell and Chris Taylor also delivered. Sword, you've been in the West Newton Gymnasium. And I think every part of that gym was used, even the scoreboard. And you know where that is. You can see it actually in the pictures in the background there at the bottom. It's kind of hanging. And there's a little platform <laughs> it, underneath it. Yeah, there is a platform. And there's fan footage of just those two men fighting. And all of a sudden, you see a flying Chris Taylor. Oh, there it is. Go through, yes, go through a table. And it was a holy shit chant that was definitely deserved. Awesome. Awesome. Oh, you, yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I enjoyed it very much. And people wanted to know, who was the guy that returned? Berg knew. Why? Because I had to give the guy a heads up. And this man made that crowd so happy because they've been asking for him. And friend of the show, genuine Jock Sampson, is back in RWA. And he defended his war championship title in our company, which made us feel really good and gave us that platform of working with other outside companies, which is needed, I think, in this day and age. Awesome. Yeah, yeah that's great. It, it, especially coming off, you know, seeing all the Ohio guys get together for DBI 3. Uh, which also is is edited. It's in the can. Just needs process to get out the door this week. Um, and it's great to hear that that's happening. Uh, you know, and crossing over as well. Because I mean, I know we've touched base on war previously, talking to Jock and maybe Juice Jennings uh, in the past. Um, but I really don't know much about the scene. And I see that when I go to something like DBI and they say, "Hey, this is you know the show." You know. They say never ha would never happen, and here is here's everybody getting together, you know, and that's really cool right. to happen. So yeah, awesome. I mean, Jock even brought in a guy. I mean, you've even said it. RWA is one of those companies that looks outside the area instead of sticking around the Pittsburgh area. He brought a guy in, pretty good, build and everything, named Levi Connors, spelled just like for IWC owner Norm Connors. So I'm sitting there thinking, I wonder if he's related, but. All oh, that aside, very good talent. I met the guy a few year, a few months back down in IWWA in West Virginia. So I was happy to see him in RWA. So it, RWA is a company that is definitely building with new names, different talent, and even different championships being defended. So I'm probably proud to be part of this company and working with other ones. To bring in that talent. Awesome, and it's a different level. It's, it's not the indie darlings like like Super Indie brings in, but there are other talents definitely worthwhile um, that that you guys are are, are, are picking up that uh, you know that IWC what so awesome. Right, right. Awesome. Uh, so go check it out rwalive.com. I'm going to show them some pictures on a video from on their Facebook page. So go look them up. Renegade Wrestling Alliance, the RWA, uh, and of course, Eamon, you had something this weekend too. I did. We all had a lot of fun stuff this weekend. Uh, I 
we at Inspire Pro Wrestling got to celebrate our one year anniversary. And so we celebrated with a freaking party. Uh, we had our Clash of the Bash event, which is going to be one of our annual events. Uh, like Sorg uh, alluded to earlier, a beach theme show. Uh, there were beach balls. Uh, I believe there were some water guns being thrown around. There was a like a, a, a bikini like beach like cardboard cutout where you can like stick your face in and take pictures thing. Um, we had a man dressed in a ghillie suit, like one of those like moss covered suits. You know, the kind of like a swamp monster sort of stuff from Chikara. Uh, perform our national anthem on uh, on a uh, uh, rock guitar. Uh, we had a live band perform, uh, wow. which is a a, a band that uh, wears lucha masks and performs surf rock, That's which was amazing. It. See, I, I've been to shows where they have live bands and it always seems awkward and nobody's really there to see the band. This sounds no, like it, was it actually awesome. worked. It was. We actually did. Uh, this was a bit of a different formatted show. We had two intermissions. Uh, it was an eleven match show, which is big for us. Wow. Um, so we did. We did two intermissions. Each intermission with uh, low Super Avengers performing, and they were awesome. And then it uh, had added to the big feel of the event. Uh, it did feel like a one year anniversary. And it was awesome, and the crowd jam packed the building, uh, and the Marquesa Hall and Theater it was awesome to see. A uh, great main event of Mike Dell retaining his championship, his Inspire Pro Championship against Lance Hoyt. Awesome match. I would definitely say seek it out. Uh, also from that, we know Mike Dell's next challenger for August is none other than Ray Rowe, uh, who won a number one contenders match. Uh, fantastic number one contenders match against Matthew Palmer. That's another one I would definitely encourage you to check out. Uh, there's a lot of great stuff. We had a bit of an unexpected return uh, on the show. Uh, Sean Vex was unable to make it to team with Jojo Bravo in his grudge match against uh, Jordan Jensen and Andy Dalton. And we had the Texas wrestling return of ACH out of nowhere. Nice. Really awesome. And the crowd lost it. It was the craziest reaction I ever uh, saw um, from a wrestling event. It was amazing. Uh, there was tons of really good stuff on that show. Um, if there's other stuff I would say seek out, um, Masada who the night before wrestled three matches in Tournament of Death and then flew from Delaware to Austin to wrestle for us uh, against Gregory James in an awesome match. So that guy is amazing. Uh, definitely go support him. Uh, killer opening contest between Davey Vega and Thomas Shire, two that I definitely think you should look out for. Uh, really, really cool stuff. Um, I will throw out a, uh, another name that I think uh, uh, you should check out uh, if you follow Texas Independent Wrestling, someone that recently debuted for us uh, this past Sunday. Uh, if you ever hear of a guy by the name of Keith Lee, please check him out. Um, I watched him powerbomb a man, sit out powerbomb a man, and he, the guy bounced at least like six inches. It was one of the craziest things I've ever seen. And that dude is a monster, and, and he is undoubtedly going to be a star one day. Um, there, there was a lot of really fun stuff on that show, uh, a lot of really interesting different stuff that was uh, – in, in for one year anniversary, it felt really good, and it was amazing to be a part of. Um, so it was so much fun. Go check us out at inspireprowrestling.com. Our next event is July 27th. We will have more information on that. It's another one of our XX Division events, so there will be a lot of women's wrestling influence on that show. Uh, a lot of really cool names that hopefully I'll be able to talk about soon um, are in the works, so definitely go check us out. Awesome. Uh, also, in the coming week, in this coming week, our first uh, uh, Smart Mark video event uh, will be up on their site. Nice. Uh, our In Their Blood event from May. Uh, we mentioned Sammy Guevara before. If you enjoyed Sammy Guevara at Super Indie, get In Their Blood because he is in a phenomenal ladder match that everybody should check out. It is one of the craziest matches I've seen, and I definitely encourage anybody to check that out. That's uh, smartmarkvideo.com, smbod.com. Uh, and yeah, the, the, like I said, fun night. Um, and if you are ever in Texas or if you're around, uh, wrestling anywhere, uh, and want to go check us out, find a way, find a way to support us. Cause that would make me very happy because, you know, we're doing some really cool stuff and I, and I want to make everyone a part of it. So yeah, definitely go check that out. Awesome. Awesome. So let's take a look forward to, uh, upcoming shows. Uh, before we do that, yes. I do want to mention oh. uh, sort of. A company I want to throw out there because they're doing something super cool. Uh, 
So are you like indie wrestling, obviously? Uh, I think so. Do you like free indie wrestling? What? Uh, a company that I believe I've mentioned before, based out of Canada, called Smash Wrestling. Uh, their most recent event uh, is in, up on their website uh, for digital download for free. And this isn't just any kind of event. This event features Chris Hero versus Takaki Wanabe. Uh, this event features ACH versus Michael Elgin. Uh, there, there is their their rival schools event, a hundred percent for free digital download. Uh, that's at smash wrestling dot com. I downloaded it today, and I will be watching it later because that the lineup on that show is awesome. I believe uh, Kyle O'Reilly's wow. on that event, the Super Smash Brothers, uh, and yeah, it is a hundred percent for free. So if you love free wrestling, and you like to support a really great wrestling company like Smash Wrestling. Go check them out. Uh, like I said, smash-wrestling.com. So go check out some indie wrestling for free. I believe Matt Cross is also on that event. So a lot of really cool stuff. So go support them. Awesome. I end up any company that gives out that kind of stuff for free and, and, and you know, is willing enough to do that. So definitely go support them. Awesome. Oh, Cherry Bomb wrestles on this. I have not seen her in a match. She just usually comes out with Pepper Parts. Yeah, she, uh, well, Pepper Parks is on this. Uh, there's a Pepper Parks Gregory Iron match on there nice. as well. Nice, I'll have to check that um, out. Yeah, and so there's a lot of stuff on that card. Uh, so go check it out. Uh, that's a, just something I wanted to plug out there. But let's get into the indie wrestling events for this weekend, right, Sorg? Right. Uh, I believe uh, Wheels, uh, you are really working an event coming up this weekend, if, if, if I'm not mistaken, right? Uh, you're very, very correct, Damon. Uh, I am working in Oil City. Once again, for their TV tapings for Dark Horse Championship Wrestling. And there's a few friends of the show that work there. Uh, a few people that Sorg and I have seen, like uh, Lumberjack LaRue, Sorg, works up there. And <laughs> I know him from the uh, IWC Legends shows. I would always be yes. up towards that direction. Yeah, uh, I also will be working with Matt Cross. It's kind of funny you said that, Eamon, that about Matt Cross, because I'll be working with him this Sunday. Up. Yes. Uh, they are doing a TV taping in Oil City, and they do they show their shows on a channel in the upper... What would that be? So it, that it's be? in Erie. It's Channel 12. Um, I actually have some friends at that channel. Uh, so yeah, yes. it's, it's it's out of Erie. It's out of Erie, PA. So if you get if you get Erie Television, but it looks like they do also put the the, the show up uh, on their website. On YouTube, yeah, uh, yeah, it's just on their website, YouTube. Um, and, and looking at this, like the you know, is an interesting group of talent they have: the Matt Crosses and the Marty Bells and the uh, Ash Namers, Matt Justice, uh, part of this. Um, and they've had like the Shane Taylors and everything in the past. Like it's a it's an interesting mix of everybody from all around from the looks of it. Um, yes. So so uh, something to check out yeah. uh, uh, for sure. Uh, cool to get that 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 more you know wrestling game back on TV. We we're talking about PWX here locally in Pittsburgh doing something. Um, and and I don't know if I mentioned on the show, but I I peeked at them a few uh, uh, a couple like about a month ago, and they, and they put some sh they're starting to put their shows online as well, and they're looking a lot better than they were when they first started. So good good to see that they're coming along. It's it, you know this, Eamon. It's hard to get good wrestling footage. Yeah, uh, out the <laughs> gate. You know, uh, it, it took us to find an independent movie uh, producer and director to, to get footage for uh, good, good enough exactly, footage for our show. Exactly. If not great footage, by the way. We bo but, yeah, we've um, both seen some very, very questionable, like, man, there's some good wrestling in there. I wish I could see it better. You know, absolutely. Um, that's that. I mean, that's that's a big problem. You know, because I, I just it seems like that's that thing that's kind of forgotten on the wayside. Uh, uh, so, but from what I can see from the the video that I'm watching, it looks like some really good stuff. Like, mm -hmm. uh, quality wise, I definitely see it, it. It looks to be up there. So, I have that. I have that. Yeah, I mean, you think about it. Like you said, it depends on who's filming your stuff for you, and also not only do how they're filming it it's also what that venue looks like and what it looks like of what they want to do like a entryway and lighting mm -hmm. i mean some places some places are good for okay we'll just have straight lights i mean exactly. rwa exactly. just does 
straight lights, and we look fine. What we use, but kind of There's a cool. VOW. But you guys also have a pretty cool entrance. VOW is doing a new entrance. I, they, they, you know, kind of a Titantron type thing. I think. Yeah, um, they they have that big old screen mm. right above their entryway because I was at their last show checking it out as just a spectator for once, and they have lights shining down toward the ring, kind of like a IWC does, but except for theirs are coming off the side and that has to do like that has to do with the venue yeah, too yeah. like iwc is able yes. to do that at court time because court time has those lights and we're able to do yeah. the dark there versus look at any other iwc show it kind of looks like any other indie show you know exactly uh, it's bleachers and and it's definitely in a basketball court like i'm seeing with dark horse <laughs> here you know uh um, yeah and 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 the basketball court can look awesome if it's something like you know night of the superstars where you fit 1200 people in there you know, exactly. right. uh, or it could just look like, uh, you know, le- uh, 50 people in a basketball court, you know, surrounding a ring. Oh, yeah. uh, I mean, it's it's definitely, you know, you can dress it's, it up, ha- you know. Right? Yeah, I was going to say, it's, it's out, it depends on how smart that promoter or that, that person that's helping you out. Hey, uh, there's that hard cam. Let's put all those people over there instead of mm-hmm. just leaving all those seats empty or this, that way or the other. I mean, mm-hmm. so you want to either make your show look good or you don't care about your product enough to sit there and go, eh, wherever, sit wherever you want. I got video. Yeah. Why aren't people buying my DVDs? It's like, well, because they <laughs> bought one and told their friends they suck. You know? Yeah, yeah, there's a lot that goes into it. You know, there's it, a lot that goes into it that people don't always take account of. Oh, yeah. Of, so. oh, exactly. Yeah. A, lot of those, a lot of those little things you don't think about, you know? And it, mm-hmm. it really adds up, you know, like, why is this hard camp? Why is this hard camp just here? And we're, we, we, we're leaving all the downtime in between as the new referee comes to the ring, you know, that I'm seeing in, in this video I'm watching. It's like, you gotta, <laughs> and some people do that, you know, um, like the announcers are bantering while we're just waiting for the next match to start, you know? Yeah, it's like, exactly. No, cut that yeah. out. We don't need that. We don't need that at all. Yeah. You know, and that, that, you need you need to concentrate on attention span. Like, well, you need to be concerned with your attention span of the people in the audience, and then you need to be worried yep. about the attention span of the people who are going to watch it afterwards. It's going to be shorter mm-hmm. for the people watching on video. So you need to cut out all those yeah. dead spots. So, I mean, yeah. I, I realized it was the first time I've ever worked Dark Horse and doing a TV taping, so I'm sitting there all excited going, okay, I do the music like anywhere else. And I'm doing this through this whole list, and I watch one of those episodes after it, and I'm like, wait a minute, why don't I hear that music? Because they're on TV, and they don't want to get in trouble. Mm-hmm. I'm playing that music for that audience, and that's keeping that audience's attention. That's true, too. That's true, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you got to watch with that music stuff. It's it's such a gray area, you know. Yeah. And, and, and it's, you know, I, you know, that's a whole other thing. We'll get that. We'll get that. Um, <laughs> I, you know, look at all oh, your ECW. You know, there's a reason why yeah. you're not introduced. You're not enjoying your ECW quite so much because of the weird music they play during a New Jack match. Yeah, I love watching Balls Mahoney matches and listening to a Casio keyboard like <laughs> rip track. <laughs> kind of takes the edginess out of it, but somebody's not going to pay for those rights if they didn't pay for them in the first time. Oh, and I don't blame them. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So. On that yeah. Note, yeah. You got anything else there, Eamon? There are a couple of events I do want to bring up real quick. Uh, obviously, uh, one I do want to promote uh, as Inspire Pro, it's a part of the National Wrestling Alliance. Uh, in San Antonio, Texas this weekend, uh, I believe on the 21st, uh, Branded Outlaw Wrestling, NWA Branded Outlaw Wrestling, will be holding an event uh, which a, has a rematch uh, from the Inspire Pro show this past Sunday as their main event when uh, Carson, the Texas Lion Carson, defends his heavyweight championship against James Claxton. Should be a very fun match. Uh, there's also a defense of the NWA World Women's Championship on that show in a three-way. Uh, there's a lot of fun stuff on that show. Brandon Outlaw Wrestling produces a lot of great guys. Um, and they bust out some really cool shows. It's at, at 1630 Goliad Road, uh, June 21st. Um, you can go to Facebook.com says Branded Outlaw Entertainment for more information on that. Uh, and go support a uh, fellow member of the National Wrestling Alliance. Uh, also this weekend, if you're not in the Texas wrestling area, uh, if you're more around the Midwest area, uh, AAW, which is a company I've mentioned many times before, has been you know around for many years and does a lot of amazing stuff. Uh, they're holding their Bound by Hate event uh, June 20th in Berwyn, Illinois at the Berwyn Eagles Club. 
a lot of great talent on this card. Uh, Jimmy Jacobs against Eddie Kingston. Obviously, that you know those two names alone. That'll be a really amazing match. Cole Cabana is on the show. The Batiri from Chikara. Uh, a lot of really good talent. Uh, AAW always brings in really good guys to uh, to their events. So go check them out. You can find more information about that event at aawrestling.com. And that's all the indie events I can think of this week's sword. All right. Uh, with that, hey, thanks Riz and uh, and Wheels for coming on and help us talk about the, the shows for the weekend. Um, I know uh, you got one in a month, Eamon. Uh, I'm not working anything until after July. Although I, I, there's some stuff. There's Pittsburgh Wrestling next week. I kind of have my pick of shows that I'm not involved in. Uh, so <laughs> looking forward to maybe hitting up one of those, hopefully. Uh, and we'll talk about them on next week's show, uh, KSWA and PWX, uh, respectively, if you're in the area. Uh, go look them up. Uh, I hear both are fun shows. Uh, so, I, you know, I, I kind of uh, decided, uh, I'm, you know, since... Since I've, I've had a good run, I had a good start at it. Uh, so I, I, I'm going to try to hit up, um, at least by the end of the year, make sure I have attended uh, every indie promotion in the area, in the you know in the Pittsburgh area. I'd love to expand that out. Well, obviously, I got to hit up one in Erie. Uh, you know, maybe we'll, we'll maybe we'll do a Dark Horse. Uh, maybe we'll see finally get to a, a Black Diamond Wrestling that I've heard of for so many years. Um, so I, it's, it's, it's my own indie tour, Eamon. Yeah. So. Just keep, keep expanding it. Go then just do all the, uh, Ohio wrestling, uh, then, uh, do a lot of, do, do your PA stuff and eventually you'll make it down to Texas that yes. I'll bring you to inspire Creep pro wrestling. In your show. way. Creep in your way. Yes. So <laughs> slowly. But... On that note, thanks again, guys. And of course, uh, check out wrestling mayhem show.com for all the stuff we're doing. Sorgatronmedia.com for all the stuff outside of wrestling as well, if you want to go check into that kind of stuff. Um, and you can check us out on Facebook, Google+, uh, Twitter, at Mayhem Show, all that stuff, Wrestling Mayhem Show. I actually uh, put some of the links, including uh, the uh, Facebook page for our guests and the Smash Wrestling link over on the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group. Uh, you can get us on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, audio and video forums. And join us here live, of course, Tuesdays at live.sorgatronmedia.com. Drop us a line at goodtimes at wrestlingmayhemshow.com, 412-206-WMS0 for the hotline. In the meantime, if you have anything, we talked about Riz's uh, Sammy Guerva tweet, <laughs> Guevara tweet, you know, of course. And hit us up on any of that stuff, any other thoughts you have about any wrestling you want to share. Uh, so with that, thanks a lot to everybody. Eamon. Uh, is at aiming to please. I'm at Sorgatron. Thanks again, Basic Sickness, for this outro. Go support your indie wrestling. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Painted for the taste of the poor. Sick, sick, sick. You know how I act now. If you got a problem, come and see if I'm a back down. Act wild. Steady sipping.